Hey guys, welcome or welcome back. For those of you who are new here, my name is Bridget and I make home and DIY content here on YouTube. I would really appreciate it as this is a new channel for me if you would subscribe, ring the bell if you want notifications, and please follow me on Instagram for this fun DIY journey. Will we, as a DIY community, ever get over IKEA hacks? Like, is there anything better than finding something super inexpensive that's just a blank slate to customize and make your own? It just doesn't get any better. A couple months ago, I was at IKEA and I saw this $2 clock and I knew that I just had to amp it up and make it better. This video actually is inspired by a version that Tina Lay did here on YouTube. I will definitely link hers below. Hers is amazing. And I am super, super pumped to show you guys what you can do with something that's plain and inexpensive and how you can completely transform it to make it fit your home. Let's get started. So here's the $2 clock that we will be using today from Ikea. I will definitely make sure to link this below for you guys. Our first step is going to be to take off that shiny reflective cover that's on top of it, then flip it over and gently remove this battery pack. When you do that, you will notice that the two hands of the clock kind of just fall loose. So pick them up, set them aside, and we will use these later in the process. Next, I'm giving our clock two coats of matte black spray paint, letting it dry in between each coat and making sure to get the front and back and all the crevices. I'll be using Silhouette Studio to cut out some stencils. So here I've just grabbed a couple leaf designs I bought on Etsy and I'm taking them from this mock-up image I made using the clock's dimensions and just pasting them onto a separate sheet. This way I can make sure that I cut out just the stencils of the leaves and not the circular shape behind them. After repositioning the leaves on this page, I can go ahead up to the right hand corner and hit that send tab. This will take me over to the next page where I can change the material from cardstock to stencil since that's what we'll be using and it's ready to be sent for cutting. It's kind of hard to see on camera, but if you look closely, you can see the outlines of these leaf stencils that I have created. So now I'm just going to go ahead and separate each one. In order to cleanly weed out the inside of this shape, I'm just going to take an X-Acto knife and make a light mark across it. This will give me a nice spot to then stick my weeding tool in so that I can gently lift up and out this inside portion and have just the outside border remaining. You can go ahead and discard these middle pieces since we won't be using them. Next, I'm taking some transfer tape that I've roughly cut to the same size as each leaf stencil and I'm just going to peel it off the backing and then gently lay it down on top of the stencil. Now this part is really important because you have to make sure that the transfer paper is very securely adhered, so I recommend taking something flat like this or maybe like a credit card just to really push it down. Now I'm just peeling away that backing layer from behind the stencil and setting out my leaves roughly following the design that I originally had set up on my computer. When everything's in place, I'm just pushing down pretty hard here so that that stencil material adheres to the back of the clock face and then I can just gently peel away the transfer tape that I used beforehand. Thank you. 
I ended up choosing the color Mown Grass to put inside my leaf stencils. Now I went to the hardware store to grab paint, but I followed a hack that I've heard from other DIYers, and that is to grab something from the room that you'll be painting in and use that to color match exactly what you need. So for me, I just grabbed some wallpaper that I'd already used in my bathroom, and that way when I went looking for greens, I knew that I found one that would actually match the rest of the decor already in the room. As I paint, I'm using a combination of kind of these long swiping strokes with some little stippling motions. You gotta be careful around the edges of the stencil because you really don't want it to bleed underneath. My end goal is to kind of mimic the texture of real leaves, so I'm keeping that in mind as I go through painting. Now I'm gonna go ahead and do three complete layers, of course letting the paint dry between each one. To add some dimension here, I'm taking that original mown grass color and mixing it with a lighter kind of creamy white that I had on hand. This will just create a lighter shade of course and then I'm gonna use that shade to fill in some details here on the leaves. I've got a small detail brush, this one's like dollar store, super cheap, but honestly use an ISO one if you've got it. I do not have super steady hands and I'm honestly just not good at freehand drawing or painting so I had to go very slowly but if you are a painter by all means skip the stencils and just go at it you'll love the result. Adding in this second color to the leaves was just a complete game changer. It added so much dimension and they're gonna look beautiful. I seriously cannot wait to take off the stencils, but I have to wait for the paint to dry, so let's move on to the next step. Because I wanted really flashy hands on my clock, I decided to go with this brass gilding paint. You could use another color, or you could even leave them gray if you want to. Looking back, I think it would have been easier to use something like spray paint just consistency wise, but the end result was really beautiful, so I have no regrets. As you're painting, just make sure that you get in all the little nooks and crannies and do a second layer if your paint needs it. Removing the stencils is seriously so satisfying. They did a pretty good job of keeping the paint out of these little cracks and edges, but I'm gonna go in later and touch it up just to be safe. A tip I learned from Lone Fox here on YouTube is if you've already spray painted something but you need to touch it up, just take the can of spray paint and spray it into like a cup or a plastic bag and then dip a paintbrush into that bag and just use it to follow any little touch ups that you need. One thing to be aware of though is that spray paint tends to eat through materials so you have to work pretty quickly and or just double layer your bags or cup. I wanted the numbers on my clock face to stand out a bit more, so I'm going to be using some embroidery thread here. Now what I'm doing is threading it through the needle and then pulling it so that it's two strands thick instead of one, tying a knot on the end. You'll notice that I'm poking it up not through the very end hole, but through one away from that. Now watch what I'm doing here. I'll put it back down through that end hole, and then I will go up another hole again and do the same thing where I poke it through and then bring it down the previous hole. If I was gonna do a traditional sewing where I just went up one, down the next, up one, down the next, there would be gaps in the design. This way, as I go up one and then down the previous one, I'm going to have a really nice solid line without gaps. This step is so easy and look at the huge impact that it has. When you've run out of thread, just flip it over, move to the back, and then carefully tie it off and knot it securely. You're gonna go ahead and just re-thread your needle using the same steps as before, moving through all the numbers till you've got everything finished. 
With the finished clock reassembled hanging on my wall, I'm seriously blown away by the transformation. I can't believe this thing started off as a $2 IKEA clock and now just look at it. I'm feeling really inspired to try more hacks and I hope you are too. Today's video was a shorter one, so if you guys like that format, go ahead, comment down below in the comment section and let me know what your thoughts are. Do you like just one project? Do you want to see a bunch of small ones or more big ones? I am always open to suggestions. Thank you for being along for the ride today. I hope you had fun. Again, subscribe here on YouTube, please. It means so much to me. And follow me on Instagram for more DIY adventures. See you next time.